Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to class. Glad you're here. Room 309, or wherever you happen to be today. Um, today we are in section 721, and the, the main question is, what makes a quadrilateral special? So, special focused on the quadrilaterals, but we will consider some other polygons as well. So, a long time ago, probably you don't remember this because it was last semester, we did something called the shape factory, and we used pairs of congruent triangles in order to, and rigid transformations in order to form different quadrilaterals. And the thing about that process is when you, when you think about it, congruent triangles and making different shapes from those, you start to realize that a lot of shapes that we see are composed of pairs of congruent triangles. In fact, let's look at a couple. Uh, so if I have this triangle, this one on the screen right here, and I make an exact clone of it, go, there's our clone. Um, if I subject that clone to a couple transformations, like perhaps maybe a rotation, you can see out of nowhere from these two congruent triangles now, I have this shape that is a parallelogram. Um, it's got these uh, opposite angles because they were congruent triangles, right? This angle is congruent to this angle. And if I add that angle and this angle up, you can see it's the same two over here, this angle and this angle. So all of a sudden I know in a parallelogram because it is just two congruent triangles, the opposite pairs of angles are congruent. And I can see that because of the embedded congruent triangles. Another thing that's true is um, these opposite sides are congruent to each other. They're the same length. This side is a corresponding side with this one. Uh, this side is a corresponding side with this one. So if you have a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent, opposite sides are congruent. And if I think about this, this angle right here and this angle, those are congruent angles because they correspond. Well, it also makes it the case that because the angles are congruent, it forces those opposite sides to be parallel. That's the converse of this, um, this the theorem that says if you've, if you've got two parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent. Turns out the converse is true. If you have two lines cut by a transversal and the alternate interior angles are congruent, it forces the lines to be parallel. So because I'm thinking about a parallelogram as these two congruent triangles, I can start saying a lot of things are true about a parallelogram, namely opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are um, congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. So there's a lot of things there because of that. Also, I can take this thing and I can make it so that it has a right angle all of a sudden, and then we recognize this is our friend the rectangle. And if I, if I straighten that up and make this a right angle, now you can see I've got four right angles, right? All of the angles are right angles. Opposite sides are still congruent and they're parallel. So that's got, the, and then I could make it so that the sides are congruent, and now I'm looking at my friend the square. So thinking about the fact that if you have, um, these polygons that are, that are built on, it's, they're all quadrilaterals built on just two congruent triangles. You get all these shapes. And this is kind of what we did in the shape factory. In fact, I can take this thing and take it another step further. There's back to this. Um, yeah, look at, not that. I wanted to go to, there we go. Look at that. This is, look at this weird thing. We might call this a kite, right? But on this kite, um, mm, these pair of angles are congruent, right? This angle plus this angle is the same. These other one, this angle down here is not congruent to this one. Um, there are two, the connecting sides, this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side. So on this shape we might call a kite, it's got special properties too. Today I don't want you think, I mean, yeah, think about these, especially if you see quadrilaterals four-sided objects. Think about the congruent triangles that are embedded in them and the properties you can get because of that. But some of the shapes, I want you to do a little bit of internet research today. In problem 84, it says review some of the algebra tools that we already have and we're going to consider two different line segments. Uh, consider the line segments A, B, and C, D given by these points. We're asked to draw those two line segments on a grid and calculate the length of each segment. Let's take a moment and do that, set that up in GeoGebra so we can see exactly what's going on there. So I've got those points uh, 
over in uh, GeoGebra. So let's pop over there. Here they are. And we're asked to find the distance between those two points. So it says, draw these two segments on a coordinate grid. Okay, so I've got them on a coordinate grid, and I'm going to actually go ahead and use the segment tool to connect them so I can see what I'm talking about here. Let's see. Ooh. Where is that segment tool? Uh, Mr. Roberts, you can't find the segment tool? No, I actually can't find the segment tool. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna just use some lines here. So one of the things we're asked to do is find the length of the segment that goes from A to D. Now I've drawn a line that goes infinitely and you're like, mm, that's, that's not what we were asked to find and you're correct. Um, we are asked to find the distance from point A to D. So I wanna illustrate a tool that you know of, and we've been kind of seeing it showing up in class and maybe we're not fully aware of it. So let's look at it really explicitly. If I wanna know how far two points are in the Cartesian coordinate plane, and they're not nice horizontal or vertical lines, what I need to do is think about the Pythagorean theorem. So if I think about these two points, and I can come in here and I can say, look, I wanna think about the line that goes from here and then this way, right? And I didn't have to stop there, but I did. I wanna think about the length of this line and the length of this line. So my strategy here is to think about a right triangle that would have the distance I'm trying to find as its hypotenuses, right? So I'm trying to find AB, which happens to be a hypotenuse of this right triangle I just constructed. Now, it's pretty easy for me to figure out how long these pieces are. To figure out how long the segment is long on the bottom, I can just take the nine and subtract zero, and I know that this is nine units long. And to find the length of this segment, the one that runs up and down, I can take the 15 and subtract zero, and I can see this one's 15 units long. So now let me grab my calculator. I don't have it here, let me go grab it. So I take the nine and I square it, nine squared plus 15 squared. So what that is, is it's the leg squared plus the other leg squared, and I got 306, and if I take the square root of that, take the square root of 306, I get that the length of that segment is about 17.5 units. It's 17.49 and a bunch of decimals, but it should be about 17.5. Now I can verify that uh, in Desmos by using the measure tools. No, they're all disabled too. I'm using some kind of a stripped down version of Desmos this morning, or GeoGebra, and it's not letting me do a lot of things. Too bad, I'd like to verify that, but I guess I can't. Um, uh, same thing, so if I want to find, whoops, if I want to find the length of the other segment down below, um, that was the segment CB. I'm going to do the very same sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab this line tool, and I'm just going to go from C to B. So we can just visualize, we're trying to find out how long that line is that connects C to B. And again, I'm going to think about building a right triangle. And actually, I like this segment that's already here, so I'm going to leave that one. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab this and go from C through this way. There we go. So now I can I can clearly see the triangle I'm talking about. And I can see that I'm going from 3 to 2 here. So this length of this side of the right triangle, this small leg, is just one unit. And then this other one's going from 9 to one. Well, nine minus one is eight units. So this is eight units long. So if I want to find the length of CB, I'm going to take um, eight squared plus one squared, which is one. And I'm going to get the number uh, eight squared is 65, um, 64 plus one is 65. So I'm going to have the square root of 65. And it tells me the length of that segment is about 8.062, blah, 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 right? So this is interesting. If we have a quadrilateral that's sitting on a Cartesian coordinate plane, one of the things we can do is find the length of its sides by using this strategy of kind of building these right triangles that encompass the sides I'm trying to find the length of, and then using those to figure out how long those segments are. Another thing that we can do, and this is a problem that's later on, is I think this is quadrilateral shea. 
and we're asked to describe it like what's 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 special about it what's special about it well on the list of uh, quadrilaterals that we're going to look at this perhaps could be a trapezoid right it could be a trapezoid and one of the properties of a trapezoid is the opposite sides a pair of one of the pairs of opposite sides have to be parallel well when i look at this i can see that this this piece right here has a slope pattern of up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four. So that's up three over four. This line below would have to have that exact same slope pattern if this was really a trapezoid. But I can see that I go up one, two, three, four, and then I go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, four sevenths is not the same fraction as three fourths. They can't be reduced to be the same thing. So I know because this slope and this slope are not equal, this cannot be a trapezoid because the opposite sides aren't parallel. Um, one of the properties that I think could be special for this one is I think this has to be a right angle. And if I think about it, the reason why I think that is because um, if I go up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four, this has a slope of three fourths. This this line, I go down one, two, three, four, and over one, two, three. This has a slope of negative four thirds. Positive three fourths, negative four thirds. Those two slopes are opposite reciprocals. So I do know in this quadrilateral that it does have a right angle. That is a special property. I don't know that it has a special name, but it does have one right angle. Um, and then um, one, I guess one thing that I would like for you to do with this problem is I want you to pause this video and I want you to find the perimeter of this, vi of this uh, quadrilateral. Um, be able to, if you have things like this, be able to find what the perimeter is. And we're going to look at that in just one second. But pause now, do it, and then we'll look at it together. So to find the perimeter of this thing, right, I'm going to be doing what we just discussed. I'm going to be building off these little um, right triangles that kind of go around the shape that I'm talking about. Uh-oh. Get back up here. And I, I do have to apologize. I'm not using my normal setup for doing this, so it feels a little awkward to me. Um, so we already said that this was three units long, and this was four units long. Right? No, one, two, three, four. Great. That is a, it, and because this was a vertical and this was a horizontal line, this is a right angle. So this is a right triangle. This side right here equals three squared plus four squared and then once I do that once I add that's what uh, this is squared so I take the square root of that right and this is just the Pythagorean theorem leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared this is 9 this is 16 9 and 16 is 25 and the square root of that is 5 so this is 5 units long this next side over, remember this had a slope of negative four over three, right? I, and I can draw this triangle inside as well. This was down four. Of course, as a side length of a triangle, it's a positive four. And this is over three, right? Again, we built this right triangle. And it's the same problem up here, right? So I don't need to do it again. I know that that's going to be five units long. This side is pretty straightforward, right? Because it's just this vertical line. It's one, two, three, four, five units long. So, so far, my perimeter is 15, right? I've got five plus five plus five. My perimeter is the number 15 plus something else, right? I don't, I don't know what this one is yet. We got to figure that out. Well, again, looking at this right triangle that we can encapsulate this with, I got here a length of four units and down here is a length of seven units. Um, 7 squared is 49, 4 squared is 16, so I'm looking at 49 plus 16, and the area, or the length of that piece would be the square root of that. Mr. Roberts, are you grabbing your calculator? Yes, I am. Let's see, uh, 49 plus 16, the square root of that is about 8.06, so... Um, I'm going to round it to 8.1 and honestly, probably mm, I'll just say 8.1. I wonder if that's even too much. Um, 
Yeah, what is, is 49 plus 16 a nice number at all? It's 65 divided by 5. No, it's 5 times 13. I'm going to leave it. I can write this one of two ways. And to be honest, I like both. So this is called an exact answer. So I can just write root 65, right? Hmm. That looks like I don't even need a calculator for it necessarily, right? 49 plus 16 is 65. So the perimeter of this is 15 plus 65 units, right? And I don't know if these are inches or feet or miles, but it's 15 plus 65 units. And if I wanted to round this to a decimal, that's 15 plus that 8.1, which would be, what, 23.1. So I could also write as an approximation. I could say, well, this is also approximately 23.1 units. Again, I apologize for this setup. I'm trying to get so that I can use my Surface back in this desktop. Right now I'm using this thing and it works, but I'm used to seeing what I'm writing on and it's hard for me to coordinate this. So it, it, looks, it looks like I've digressed in terms of my handwriting. I apologize. So what we've just done together was we did question 84 and we did question um, 86 right is this special mm, it has it has a right angle but it's not a trapezoid she thinks it was and we know why it's not um, what i want you to do today for the remainder of your class time and you've got about 35 40 minutes is i want you to identify properties of quadrilaterals and i kind of talked about this when i looked at the congruent triangles at the beginning and we talked about the shape factory um, over here is the thing that I want you to be filling out. So there's four pages of these, and it's completely fine with me if you get together with some friends and you fill them out. However, I'll remind you, it is res you're responsible for taking the final product you produce, copying those slides, and putting them into your presentation. Because when you save your presentation, that's what I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at what you have in your account. So go ahead and fill these out. Um, and like I said, you can share this and have people edit. But once you're done, if you select all the slides that your group did, you can right click and copy those slides. Then you can open up your copy and paste those in and delete these these blank ones. I'll see that. Um, and you can tell me who you worked with, but I'm not if I'm not going to look around at other students work. You have to give me a copy of what you guys did together. But for each one of these, I just want you to click into a, uh, one of the boxes and I'll look at uh, I'll look at the rectangle. Just click into it and tell me what its special properties are. This is kind of research project, project but it's kind of also um, kind of knowing, thinking about this being two equilateral right, or no, two, two right triangles put together, right? You can tell me a lot of properties just by thinking about this. So for example, um, we could say that opposite sides, opposite sides are congruent. Mm, I know there's a way I can insert that symbol here, but I'm not going to think about it right now. So I'm going to write the word C-O-N-G-R-U-E-N-T. Opposite sides are congruent. Um, opposite sides are parallel. Um, let's see. All angles are right angles. Um, and I think there's something that's true about the diagonals. I think the diagonals in a rectangle are congruent. In fact, I think that's a nice way, checking that diagonals are congruent is a nice way to make sure that this has um, got squares in each of the corners. So anyways, that's what I want you to do. There's 16 of them. If you're working with groups of four and you just research, find those, give me the special properties of these polygons. Also, one other word of caution, um, the, when I copied this and pasted, pasted these, some of these things got stretched. So if I look at this hexagon and it's called a regular hexagon, it should not appear that one of the sides is stretched like this. In a regular polygon, all the sides are the same length and you'll read that all the angles are the same angle. So be aware of that and I apologize for this distance difference. And I think I'm just going to hit save. So I think when you open this up, you'll get my 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 thoughts on the uh, the uh, 
rectangles. All right, that's it. I hope you have a great afternoon, great day. I look forward to seeing you in class on Thursday and Friday. This is Mr. Roberts. Goodbye.